The term social contract is a term uh, discussed in the philosophy of the 17th and 18th centuries. We derive our concept of a social contract from the work of Pierre-Joseph Proudhon, who said that a social contract is an agreement between individuals. This is in contrast to the position of Jean-Jacques Rousseau and others that stated that the justification of a social contract is derived from the collective as it is presented, represented by the state. Our goal is to lay the foundations for an egalitarian and just governance of digital societies. We regard a digital social contract as a voluntary agreement between people within the digital realm. Uh, that's in our model. We try to create a model where the agents communicate asynchronously using uh, speech acts. We're looking to construct uh, some sort of a ledger that will record and bind in different acts of the individuals. Existing ledgers have uh, disadvantages uh, and are not well suited for our model. Bitcoin, for example, uh, consumes too much uh, energy. It is estimated to consume today almost the same amount of power as the whole state of Chile. Uh, proof of work in general and also proof of stake are plutocratic by design. Uh, which let the rich get richer. And overall, we see that decentralized networks evolve to become uh, centralized over time. Therefore, permissionless consensus protocols are not well suited for egalit egalitarian governance. Permission protocol may be more suitable for that cause, but they are not scalable enough uh, for, uh, for this purpose. So these are our goals. Um, we want every member of the society to participate in the consensus protocol, or at least uh, to have the option to participate. We assume uh, civil free digital identities, so we can reach the one person, one vote. And we look for asynchronous protocols so agents can progress locally without the need to synchronize with everyone on every transaction. And our goal is in the skies. We want it to be scalable to the thousands, hopefully millions, maybe even billions of participants. This is what we aim to. Here is a list of additional papers uh, uh, from our group uh, on the same topic. Um, so paper number two here uh, discusses the concept of uh, genuine personal identifiers. And in paper three, we present a trust-based approach to create, to grow uh, civil uh, resilient uh, communities. So the number of, number of civils in the community is bounded, the number of uh, fake identities. In paper five, we propose an economic method for incentivizing, uh, uh, deterring civil creation and in incentivizing uh, civil hunting, civil uh, And um, paper six uh, lays the foundation for digital social contracts, and paper seven is the full paper which I present short version here. We start by defining an abstract model, uh, still a single synchronized ledger, and here are the basic terms that we use. Um, a V act is a message, a message uh, which, for the purpose of the mathematical model, can be any string over any alphabet. It is originated by one agent that signs it and is addressed uh, to another agent. A history is a finite sequence of messages, and a letter is a tuple of histories uh, indexed by the agent. So here starts the main. Uh, uh, difference maybe between what, uh, our work and conventional uh, distributed ledgers. Each history this model represents the actions of a single agent and, and the messages he received. Um, the ledger is a tuple of such history. This separation is what will allow us to construct the protocol to be asynchronous, which is uh, really distributed among the agents and not replicated. Conventional protocols are, are 
actually are. We define two types of transitions in this model. In output transition, um, in an output transition, the sender of the message appends it to its own history. And in an input transition, the recipient of the message appends it uh, to, to its own history. So the result is that each subsequence of messages of signal agent is linearized, but different agents progress asynchronously and between the, between uh, the top of histories is only partial uh, linearization. We define a ledger to be consistent if all histories agree on the order of act of each agent. And the first, uh, this simple abstract model is uh, consistent by design. Let's return to model uh, distributed ledger implementation by adding um, uh, another symmetric score. And now when we look at the two transition, in an output transition, when the sender uh, sends its message, it, it edits to the message store after appending it to its own history. And in an input transition, the recipient uh, takes the message out of the message store and append, append it to its own history. So now each agent can manage its own uh, tuple of history separately. Still, it is a tuple of histories of all agents. So still, uh, there's some a lot. Uh, 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 the, the, the ledger is still very much uh, replicated, but the different copies of different agents uh, agents are not uh, are not identical because of this partial linearization between the agents. And we show uh, in the in the paper we show that this distributed model is the consistent implementation of the abstract model that presented before. The third step, uh, moving towards the fault tolerant implementation. So some background. In uh, 1985, uh, Bracha and Tueg uh, presented the uh, two rounds of acknowledgement consensus protocol. We call it ECHO and READY. Um, these two rounds of, of acknowledgement, uh, within permission, the protocol um, uh, assures the safety. That is, when the protocol ends, all honest agents agree on the same value. But they did not discuss liveness. They only presented the theoretical results. In 1999, appeared the Practical Byzantine Fault Tolerant Protocol, which is based on the work of Bracha and Twig. Um, in, in PBFT, um, each agent is a leader in its turn, uh, which they call a view. And there's also two rounds of acknowledgement. They call it prepare and commit. And there's also a third round, a, a parallel round of timeout. Um, if, if Two thirds of the participant reach timeout before the leader achieve consensus, then the transaction is postponed to the to the next view, and the leader is uh, replaced. In our fault tolerant approach to digital social uh, uh, for digital social contracts, um, since every agent runs in its own history, all agents are leaders simultaneously, and that. That is the main difference. We also use two rounds of acknowledgement, like in PBFT, prepare and commit. But here is the first, uh, uh, the first uh, advantage of our protocol. There is no need for timeout, since each agent progress separate uh, asynchronously. Byzantine agents can, uh, uh, if they do a Byzantine attack, they can only block uh, their own line of history. So far, our ledger impl uh, implementation is distributed by design, but still we use a consensus protocol that is similar to PBFT and hence uh, not scalable. But now I present uh, uh, we leverage on the distributed structure that we created to achieve some optimizations that will enable asynchronicity, uh, which is the key for uh, scalability. 
The first optimization, uh, we call it local consensus. Um, we require that each message may only affect the state of uh, its sender and its uh, recipient. Uh, we assume that uh, each message is uh, within the scope of a single uh, social contract. And we assume that uh, different social contracts are independent of each other and run their own initial uh, internal state. The result is that uh, in each, uh, for each social contract, in each uh, community that runs together a single social contract, it is possible to run a EBFT consensus only within the contract or within the community. Other communities or other transactions that belong to other contracts uh, cannot affect, a Byzantine attack on another contract cannot affect the consensus within a single contract. So we already achieved some uh, sort of uh, asynchronicity. Um, the all, all society, the all, commun all communities, the all contracts are run in parallel, but each contract can uh, run its own, uh, each uh, group of people who are running a single contract can run their own consensus uh, locally. Second optimization is deferred consensus. Again, we require that each message uh, may affect only the state of the sender and the state of the recipient. And we now add uh, some implementation tools. We add hash functions. First, we had, add a hash function to uh, chain transition to each other, such that every, every message sent, every transition uh, made, um, signs the uh, previous uh, transition that the same agent uh, uh, did or received. Uh, for example, if you look at the diagram, and when agent three sends message uh, M2, um, this message automatically acknowledged that agent three received message M1. When agent four sends message M3, it acknowledges both that it received message M2 and also that uh, agent three received message M1 and so on. By the time agent five sends message five, not only acknowledges um, uh, the first four messages, but also now he knows that agent one, agent two, agent, sorry, agent one, agent three, and agent four also acknowledge the first message, message one. So agent five can now commit message one. So this way, the consensus protocol can continue without without actually reaching a direct consensus. Consensus is reached on the fly as the ledger is growing. The third optimization, uh, on-demand validation. Uh, again, we uh, we use uh, we assume independence between different social contracts. Um, the overlap when, when the ledger is grow when the ledger grows, but um, each has its own internal state. And we again use the hash function um, uh, to sign that inner state. As you can see in, in the table, a participant can uh, code their internal state in blocks where each block presents a different contract. Uh, this allows the agent to uh, submit only the information required for the specific message he wants to now uh, send. Um, so validation can occur on demand, uh, and other agents can uh, validate only the, the state of the contract which is relevant to the current transaction uh, transition without the need to validate the whole network. Optimization together allows us to construct a, a, a ledger which is generally distributed. Uh, after the, using this uh, optimization, now each agent can uh, can only can can store only uh, its own history. It doesn't need to, to store locally the history of everyone else. Uh, the ledger will progress by reaching consensus over the hash code and then not on the internal state. Um, so, so this ledger is 
uh, generally uh, distributed and not as other distributed ledger claim to be, which they are only replicated and not really distributed. This is our approach to get a, a permission protocol that is scalable uh, for much uh, bigger uh, communities. This is the link for uh, for the full uh, paper. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Proko. And uh, uh, do we have any uh, questions from the audience? Ji Chen gave a uh, 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 question. Uh, I will read it from uh, there. He says, uh, uh, everyone has a uh, Niger and the uh, action is decided to be final when it is uh, rectified uh, by the super majority agent. But how about communication complexity and the storage complexity? So we deliberately start with something that is similar to PBFT, to the practical Byzantine fault tolerant. So we can uh, lean on the giants, uh, uh, lean on the giants, as the phrase says. Um, so our starting position, our communication complexity, complexity and storage complexity are similar. But um, since every user uh, stores only its own actions, and it only needs to uh, participate in consensus protocol with uh, of, of agents that run the same uh, social contracts as he does. Um, this can reduce the complexity uh, many times. Um, it depends on the structure of the network. It depends on the structure of the contracts that the people run. Um, but, but it can improve quite quite a lot. So think of uh, think of it as a uh, thousand of people can run PBFT together, but every group of a subgroup of several people within this community actually running the community the protocol locally. So uh, the complexity depends on the size of the local group. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we don't have other questions, but I have a question. May I ask? So in your model, uh, it's uh, it says uh, we we are talking about a uh, uh, voluntary agreement among genuinely identified people, specified and taken and fulfilled in the digital realm. And uh, so uh, here are like uh, here are like uh, real people, right? So uh, would it be? Uh, the study would the study be applied as a, a, a robot agent, like a program? So that, we uh, cover that. Sorry. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, my main question here is, is your is question like a, is your question about the robot? Yes. Right, right. Would the would the your Please study be apply applicable to to a robot like uh, participate in the uh, digital world? Do you, do you, do you, do you call a, do you talk about a robot in the sense of a fake identity or yeah, a, a program an automatic identity. Um, yes. uh, algorithm programmed identity? Yes. So, we also talk about we also talk about autonomous agents, which has which are robots, which are uh, programmed uh, uh, identities. I didn't present it here, yeah, um, yeah. but uh, within communities, if an agent is known to be an autonomous agent, then they use the same protocol. Yes, they mm -hmm. they don't participate. They are not counted in the consensus protocol, mm -hmm. but oh. they are uh, counted in the state transitions. I see. I see. Yeah. 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 Okay. Interesting. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's my question. Maybe we um, actually we have uh, um, 
the the other speaker is not here yet. Maybe we um we take a, a break till the um till the like uh, uh, question and the answer session time because Jin Chen is taking break. She's uh, ch she's trying the section three of this uh, section three of this uh, um, uh, this workshop. But uh, but we we also have a uh, uh, we also have a uh, we all also have a, a question and answer for all authors in uh, this uh, um, in this, this session at uh, eighteen forty five to nineteen. So um. maybe. Uh, shall, we, shall we just um, uh, make the question and answer session now and uh, take a longer break later or, or we, we do it on time? Like start again at 18.45. I think we can do the Q&A now if um, the speakers are still here. Oh, okay, good, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so hi, Jin I, I, I told you away. So, so maybe, yeah, yeah, we have uh, Auri and uh, Sajiv. So, so we can, we can have a uh, uh, question and answer sessions now. Good. I see there is a question from the audience posted in the message. Do you want to read that? Okay, I'll read it. How large would you expect one social contract to scale to? Is it a significant problem? for this social contract if some users periodically go offline. This is for Aubrey, I think. Okay. So um, to be, uh, what is the word, preserve is, uh, preserve, to, to go, to, to be, um, excuse me? Uh, yeah, so uh, the question well, actually, uh, let, let me interpret it. It's, it says uh, for the for one social contract, how many agents can participate to? It says to scale to, I assume it's uh, how many agents can participate. Uh, it says uh, uh, if some user periodically go offline, this would be a, uh, uh, would be would it be a significant problem? That's the second question. So if too many agents within the same contract, participating in the same contract will go offline, um, that will be problematic for the progress of, of that uh, uh, um, contract. It will, it will defer consensus. It will not block uh, tran uh, transactions. Well, Transaction will not reach consensus when when too many people are offline. Mm -hmm. um, and for a single contract, well, we can. I think that the practical Byzantine fault tolerance grows to hundreds or thousands of members, so a single contract can easily grow to the, to the same amount. Mm -hmm. um, under some conditions of some of the of, of the optimization I presented, uh, it can also grow more than that. 